Hi everybody, we are Hello. live from uh, Copenhagen. I'm Richard McFly and with me today, again, is uh, Richard Deschi. And we have an update preview for you. Um, today we're going to go through the news. Then we're going to have a look at the new map that's coming in 1.10. We're going to have a look at the new weather settings, the new helmet covers, and the new vehicle paint jobs. And we're going to have a giveaway at some <coughs> point. Uh, during this preview. Yes. The news, in short. We've talked a lot about the Insider um, Summit that we had almost a month ago now. Um, and, well, it's probably not going to be the last thing we're going to say, but we did a, a Retro Insider Summit meeting minutes. That's a summary of what was talked about, uh, most specifically what was talked about during the afternoon tea with uh, Reto Red Bjarn and the developer panel. There's also a play session that was part of the Insider Summit. That part hasn't been summarized yet, but the first two parts and additional info on what went on at the Reto Insider Summit has been collected into a PDF that's available on our website for download. So you can download and, and get an idea of what we talked to the nine insiders about and when the play sessions are uh, written down and done it's going to be added into this pdf document enough for insiders for now and recently we took a photo of all our uh, the entire team and there's a reason we are smiling a lot on this one <laughs> and that's that today we announced um, that the nordisk film games have invested in uh, Retro Motor, and we are very, very happy about this. Um, we put some info in the latest intelligence bulletin that's on the website on, on what the investment is all about, but to put it shortly, the investment will make it possible for us to focus on our pipeline, scale the game. We will be able to continue our dedication to putting players first, because your feedback is very valuable to us. Uh, and we, as, as we say, as one team, we have one mission, and that is to provide you with the absolute best uh, large scale uh, World War II experience. So we're very happy to do that. Yes. Yeah. Everybody it's is happy. It's easier with money. <laughs> Everything is easier with money. And that's it for the news. We're going to have a look at what's coming in the 110 update. Uh, the 110 update is called the Colmar Hamlet. Just to take the punchline out of it. No, it doesn't have anything to do with Shakespeare. No, it doesn't <laughs> have anything to do with any Danish prince running around the castle. A Hamlet is a small settlement uh, without a church, usually. But yeah. smaller than a village. That's a hamlet, and uh, that's kind of the thing that you built for us, Dashi. It is indeed. Yeah, um, we're gonna load up the game so we can uh, have a look around the. Uh, yeah, it's just standing up now. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so basically, it's it's a new encounter map, which is uh, a small hamlet in the French terrain. We only had one uh, one encounter when we launched the encounter game mode. We actually had two. Uh, in production, but one of them uh, didn't get greenlit for for that time. So we've kind of been waiting, we've been doing other things, we've been working on other maps. Um, but there was some time available to uh, to just try to get a new encounter map out. Yeah. Uh, right here before the end of the year. Let's see if we can get your computer on the screen. Yes, let's get it on the screen. Should be able to. <coughs> There we are. All right. So, when starting out doing a new map, the first thing that's happening, I guess, is you're given some kind of premise for some, and a top-down overall <coughs> what it's about, what what the what the map should do. Yes, it's it's very important uh, to establish early on what like the primary design goal is, or and like. If there are any secondary design goals, yeah. and uh, because then you don't get confused about like uh, 
what you want this thing to do. If you just like like start making a map, it can it can get uh, it can end up with the creative process it's going and going and end up doing nothing what you yeah. intended. So the primary goal for this one is to uh, is to provide a new and better first time user experience, and that's like for the for the entirely new player who comes into the game and it's his first mission that he plays. Mm. Um, uh, that's very important because you have a lot of people. Uh, you kind of have to hook people in that first, first uh, play session. Otherwise, yeah. they might never. Uh, lots of people only play one mission and never come back to the game or something like that. So uh, that's the primary goal of it. And secondary goal is also, of course, to provide. Probably, like most of you guys, are not first-time users. I hope not. Uh, I hope you've played the game before. Um, and you guys could also uh, use a new map. Uh, and since it has to be in the encounter for the first time user experience, it should be a map that does something different than the depot for you, for you experienced players. Yeah. Um, let me just spawn. So the first thing a new player should experience when spawning here should be um, an overview, or yeah, of course. The first time, the first thing you're going to see is the spawn menu, and you're yeah. going to see the map from uh, from up top. And hopefully, you should uh, get uh, like it should be easy for you to see what is where and like uh, what is the different sides of the map, and yeah. anticipate where you're going to spawn and everything. Um, and um, do I mute it? Mm, nope. Did you mute the sound? I did. Or no? It's it's on there. Sorry if there's no sound. Mm -hmm. Will you check the drop down button in Metals as well? Just gonna check the sound to see if it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Well. well, if there is no sound, I'm sorry about that. So basically, okay. we'll um, go on with that sound. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't know why that doesn't work. Uh, so basically, uh, for the first time user, uh, when we started designing this map, yeah. uh, we went about it and we know that we have, we have the depot and we try to learn from what we saw in the depot and differentiate ourselves and see like what, what do we want different. Mm. And on the primary design goal for new users, there was uh, there was some experience that we had with new players because Depot is very much like a uh, it's a close quarters. It's, uh, it's there's a lot of hiding places. There's combat that goes like uh, on multiple levels. You have to jump on top of the crates mm -hmm. to get a good position. And even though new players are playing against bots, we found a lot of new players. Uh, they might uh, come around a corner and run into a butt right in front of them, and then they have to uh, kill that butt. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's very. Uh, they don't get a lot of time to react no. to the AI. No. Uh, so what we wanted to do is to make a map where you see the enemy approaching from further away, um, and you have more reaction time. Yeah. Uh, because we have experience, like we have, uh, we can see from our metrics how many people come back for a second game, and like every time we make the first game easier or m uh, more simple to understand, we get more people coming back for this. So I want to get everyone into playing like skirmish and assault yeah. and get people to experience the entire game. But if I'm losing them in the first game, it's not so good. No. Um, just disable the countdown so it doesn't run out. Um, yeah. So, and for experienced players, there was another concern that I think is kind of uh, with the depot is that if if the if experienced players capture the depot, uh, it becomes very hard to retake it uh, because. The deploy zones are very easy to suppress, and the depot is a fortified position, so it's yeah. very easy to take a 
to take hold of it and never lose it again. So we wanted also to make a map that is, has a uh, better turnaround, so it's not so easy to hold. Yeah. Um, so what we basically came up with is this. Um, first of all, uh, we wanted to make, compared to the depot where you have like very tight uh, close quarters combat, lots of turns, lots of, mm. we wanted to have relatively straightforward uh, combat lines, very long range, so you see them, see the enemy from far away. Um, and then we want to sprinkle in a lot of chest high cover mm. so that you see the enemy far away. You can take shots, and if you get hit, you can crouch down. You can, you can, uh, kind of recover. You can get a, a, a moment of, of yeah. uh, a breathing room so that you can uh, have a lot of time to familiarize yourself with combat before, uh, instead of just running into a butt around yeah. a corner. And that's very good for the first time user experience, uh, I think, to have a little more time because you, we don't know, maybe the person has never played a shooter game before. So it, it could it could happen, and then they have to learn how to shoot and reload and, uh, and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, everything. For experienced players, that's also interesting because if you take away a lot of the like uh, close quarters flanking, uh, getting on top of crates or moving in different uh, layers of combat, if you take mm. away all of the kind of the the skill of knowing the map very well and navigating it and make it so that uh, you have a very easy time spotting the enemy. Mm. It becomes mostly like a skill check of your aim. Um, and having a longer range combat definitely will make it a very different map from uh, yeah. from Depot, which, which is very close quarters. So um, that's kind of the primary idea of it. Um, yeah, simply getting two, basically two different gameplay experiences yeah. into the map. Because uh, if we just do the same thing, like um, we don't necessarily always have like the biggest. Uh, we don't have a lot of different uh, art assets. We can't produce as much. We're no. we're we're still doing that. We're doing uh, Russian maps and stuff like that. But I think our strength is in that we try to make maps that kind of play with different yeah. uh, types of gameplay, even though we're using the same assets. Um, yeah, because I know, and we talked about this earlier, I noticed playing this, I've played it both with a brand new character and I've played it with a, a fully equipped character. And, and the gameplay kind of changes. It changes as a lot. As soon as you have trucks or half tracks to <coughs> actually move in closer or vehicles in yeah, general. It's, uh, it scales up yeah. kind of... Uh, the, the, the dynamic of the, of the map is, is very different. Yeah. Well, maybe Depot is not as different <coughs> Depending, like if you if you introduce half tracks to depot, most people are just gonna drive up to the to the border of yeah. the depot, and then they're gonna leave the the APC there. Uh, in this one, there are a lot more opportunities there. So I think yeah. it's gonna be for veterans. It's gonna be much more skill based, but for new players only playing against bots, it's gonna be much simpler, and hopefully, mm. uh, it's gonna get them to that second game. Yeah. Um, some people will inevitably ask, like, um, actually, let me just, I'll bring up the flow, the game flow design of it, yeah, and we'll yes. come back to this. Um, yeah. So, <coughs> in, the, in the spirit of complete simplicity, this is like uh, the design uh, document that I started with. Um, and I don't know if you know this uh, internal uh, language that we use, but the, the spheres, those are open areas. The triangles, those are kind of vantage points, good firing positions. Mm. And the red lines, those are movement patterns. And the, um, the dotted line, that is line of sight. So you can see the... the the, the basic idea of this map is very simple. You have yeah. four lines that go through the village. Four lines where you can look from one end of the village, village to the other. And you can, you can kind of shoot there. And in that line, mm. there will, of course, be all that chest high cover. Um, and the thing that people will ask is like, why do you have an open area? 
uh, from the deploy zone and coming into the village. Yeah. Because that seems to promote uh, what you were talking about earlier, like the spawn camping or uh, spawn suppression, like killing yeah. everyone they're coming out of the spawn. Uh, and I want to say I actually did try before. Uh, I tried multiple versions of this map, and mm. in, originally I had like a uh, forest that go, comes right up to the edge of the of the hamlet. Of the hamlet, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was you could kind of spawn around the hamlet, and you could very easily get in, and that would have been super hard to uh, to spawn camp. Yeah. But the problem is. Uh, you just kind of you spawn in a forest and then you get into the capture zone without ever having like an overview. You need that view of the capture zone, especially if you're a new, new player. I think if you knew the map, maybe it's okay. You know like yeah. uh, what is the size of the village, what is the boundary of the capture zone. Um, and maybe that spawn would have been okay. But for a new player, I think it's very important. That's the first time they've seen... Mm how a capture zone looks in Heroes and Generals, so you need to give them like a good overview. Yeah. And uh, that was true of Depot as well. Uh, we had tried also different uh, spawning mechanisms there. But that doesn't mean I didn't do anything about like, I still don't want people to get spawn camped, so I needed that open space yeah. for the view. Um, but uh, instead of uh, removing that open space, what I did instead is to uh, make the deploy zone extremely wide. So it's almost like a crescent shape yeah. around the hamlet. So on depot it's very easy to uh, kill people as they're coming out of the out of the deploy because they all kind of spawn in a point and then they move like pearls on a string. Mm. And it's very easy to predict where they're going to exit the their deploy zones. Yeah. Uh, in this one the deploy zone is very wide, so you have to cover a, a huge amount of uh, a huge line. Yeah. And I've made it very sure that you can't. There's no position in the map where you can see the entire, like every exit point. Oh. Um, and I think that's going to make it a lot harder to uh, to to do that yeah. spawn camping thing. But you needed the the open view, definitely. Um, yeah. Otherwise. Let's go back to the map. Let's go back and actually have a look at, at some of the stuff we talked about. Yes. Just going to launch it again. I okay. should mention that while we talk, this map is actually still available on the prototype server. Yeah. For you to play if you want to um, have a look at it before we release it in the 110. There's information on the web page on how to log on to the prototype server and, and take part in that part. Let's see if I can spawn. Mm -hmm. So like, once you spawn, you're moving towards the, the GUI icon. Yeah. You get this, you can kind of see the the kind of color co coordinated where everything is. Yes, uh, that's another thing that I did. Uh, it's kind of under the hood thing. You get this view, but also, if you notice, oh, wow. <laughs> sorry. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very used to flying around this map. If you notice, one side, one team's side of the river, yeah, is uh, has fields. So that side will be color-coded yellow, yeah. and the other side does not have any fields, it's all green and forest. Um, so, and then the, the center of the map is of course the village, but there's also like the river mm. uh, clearly defines which part is like, uh, like the middle line. Yeah. So it's, uh, that'll make it easy for you when you're, it's when you're a new player, but also if you're, uh, if you're just if you're a veteran, you're like you just kill someone. You're looking around. You can kind of always get a get your bearing in the map. Yeah, it's very very easy to see if you're actually looking or moving in the yeah. right direction. Those those things are. Uh, you guys probably don't notice those things, but they're very important for yeah. for the map to be uh, to be easy to play. And the capture zone, just when you're at this view, might as well. 
Yeah. Kind of Germans, basically. The entire village or it, the yeah. entire hamlet, yeah. And uh, I also tried to make the entrances to very obvious, like yeah. where you can, when you're when you're deploying, you're moving forward, you can see the different uh, gating entrances into the capture zone. Um, some people think I have a weird fascination with rivers and would say that this river is like a, a tough because people have to move across the bridge, but that's not the case. Actually, the river is only like uh, ankle deep, so you can cross the river no problem. Yeah. And uh, we actually did some metrics on based on the prototype that you guys comp uh, participated in, and uh, both of the the deploy zones are uh, are balanced. <laughs> and uh, actually, it doesn't seem that one side or the other no. have more I mean, wins. It's, it's early because we don't have that much data yet, so you can't be entirely sure. But there was no indicators that mm. one deploy zone would be better than the other. In fact, when we looked at heat maps. More, a lot of people got killed in the fields, uh, yeah. and mo way more people than got killed in the river or on the bridge. So uh, we actually had to put this this shed in to kind of view block some of the some of the, the so fields. So you can actually cross the fields to yeah. get to the hammer without um, getting shot. Yeah, we had to have that open area there, but yeah. uh, and of course, if there is too much spawn camping, we'll we'll look at further measures. Uh, one of the design, like one of the things we had to do with this design is also to keep it very open. Uh, this is one of those maps because it's kind of experimenting with the, with the first time user experience. We're trying to keep it uh, so that we can make big changes to the map later if we find something is, uh, if we need to do something, yeah. like we need to turn it into a tutorial level or whatever we need to do with it. Uh, we can do it's very it's very easy to yeah. work over so it's probably going to change in the future it's just the first but then again that's kind of what we do with maps yeah we don't consider them final or never ever changing we change them if we need to yeah uh, but especially when it's the first time user experience you yeah. gotta be a little a little careful because you're kind of if you do something wrong you could like cut off all of the the lifeblood of new players to the game of course, so you gotta be, gotta be ready to change quickly. Should we take a run through the village just for the people who yes haven't okay. played it on prototype? Yes. And again, it's not a village; it's a hamlet. We need to <laughs> <laughs> actually. I, I, think, I think I called it. Oh. I called it village in the the capture point. It's called village, so maybe I should change that. From. Like learning new computer. stuff is even hard for us. So, yeah. <laughs> but we have we have too many villages in the game. So. Yeah. So this is the one one of the lanes. Yeah, the one of the visibility lines. Yeah. yeah. That's the one that's uh, open all the way. The middle one. You get your other one here. You can see you can take you can take shots at people here. Yeah. Um, and here's another one where you get, you see the chest high cover. Yeah. Like you can, you can shoot at the enemy as they're approaching and then you can cover down. You'll be relatively safe. Oh, there's a guy. So basically trying to make sure that you can have a long time of engaging the enemy without getting killed or Trying to stretch it out, the combat. So, when the butts play it, the the village is pretty much split down the middle. Yeah. So you get everyone's uh, shooting at each other from across their perspective vantage points. When you get players playing it, it's much different. You get a lot more flanking, a lot more uh, complexity to the gameplay. Yeah. Uh, which but I think again, is great. We never claim our bots to be. No, no, super they don't. Players. They do that's, not. That's not the point of them. Uh, right now, the point of them is to provide a, yeah, a first time a, experience, a nice, a nice, nice target yeah. for the first time user to to learn how to shoot and move and everything. 
kind of feel like a first time user right now. <laughs> I'm not hitting anything. Yeah. Cool. And again, this map is going to be at the 110. It's called the Colmar Hamlet. Yes. And we very much look forward to seeing what you can do with it, on it. Uh, yeah. The types of games you're going to play on it. Uh, that's going to be a, a lot of fun for us to watch as well. So uh, I'm very interested to see how veterans adapt to this game, Yeah. Uh, to this map. <laughs> it's kind of funny, when, when Depot came out, people, even like human players, played it completely different. But now everyone knows the map. Yeah. So it's it's changed how people play it. So I'm I'm looking forward to see what people do. Like all the exploits you guys are gonna find, <laughs> all the all the the funny ways you're gonna you're gonna figure out how to win this map. And then I'm gonna change it. Of course you are. <laughs> of course you are. So uh, yeah, that's it for the map for now. Yes. We're gonna continue on. Um, actually, we're gonna need the map again. Oh. Shit, sorry. Because the other thing that, that we've uh, convinced you to tell us a little bit about are yes. the new weather settings. But uh, but let's get the game up and running again. It sounded so final. You were like, let's yeah. get out of this map. I'm sorry. It's over. <laughs> let's just stay in that map. Yes. And look at weather settings. Somewhere nice to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. And maybe disable the winning conditions so yes. we don't get. I do it when we get closer out. to winning. <laughs> Just to set the basics, the game basically has four times a day and three types of weather. Yes. As I understand it. Uh, yes, so it's, uh, what's it called? Dawn, dusk? We have, actually, I need my notes as well. <laughs> we, have we, have the, uh, we have the dawn, the day, the dusk, and the night. And then we have. And then we have slightly cloudy, foggy, and overcast. Yes. And we were missing a few from the uh, from the matrix. Yeah. Uh, basically, there were a few combinations of, of time of day and weather that wasn't in there. But uh, our chief animator, Reza Colling, has worked hard to complete. So this one is uh, dawn with fog. That's dawn with fog. Yeah. Um, so basically, all these are gonna make it so that you get more times of day and different weather types yeah. to uh, to play with. Okay. Different different light. No, not weather types. Like it's not gonna rain or anything, but uh, it's definitely putting a new light on yeah on everything. Uh, providing more simply providing more visual variation in the game. I very much like this because you get the the like low hanging this, sun yeah, plus yeah, the fog. Yeah. So you get like. A, very defined shapes, like yeah. uh, with like variant, uh, varying hues as it goes further into the distance. This one I really like. It also fits well with uh, with this map because we have the longer distance of engagement. Yeah, exactly. so you get people like in the distant fog. Um, and then we have the uh, the overcasts. Yes. Be the next one. This is one. dawn. Oh, sorry. Not minus. Let's dawn overcast as well. Yes. Yeah, I really like how the, the cornfields look. These settings, the dawn settings. Yeah. It's definitely very cool. And you get the kind of gradient of the sky. It's very nice. Very nice indeed. Then we have the dusk. 
Yes. With four bonus. So, this one is really cool. It's yeah, like, of, so it goes almost kind of reddish. Yeah, it's got this dirty, like a dirty sepia look. look. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, a... Yes. It's very nice. Again, the fog provides a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. When you can see this far. And then, well, you can't anyway. I don't know about you guys, but I've. I watch. Uh, when I'm making the maps, I watch these weather settings a lot, so it's super nice to see something like in a completely different color palette. Yeah. We have a, a dusk overcast as well. Yes. Oh, this is nice. Nice view. Um, Desk overcast is 13. This one I really like. Yeah. Again, this is like a completely different type of, you got like some purple and orange. It's, it's really nice. Great. Yeah. The final one we added was the uh, night overcast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is naturally pretty dark, but. Yeah. You also get that. I like that there's almost like a hint of a, of a rising sun yeah. or something like that in the distance. Yeah, this is. Yeah, over the horizon that. It's very cool. Light. Mm, yeah. And the stars and the moon and the clouds. That's great. It's very cool. Maybe we should. Uh, could you go to the river? Because there's. Yes. There should be a small detail there. I gotta hide though. I can't go full of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so. You may need a. No, you can see it. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, the clouds and the water, the reflection is back. Yeah. It's a nice little bit of itsy bitsy detail that you might not have noticed, but... Uh, it's been gone for a while. Yeah, but uh, we noticed it. We think it's cool that it's back. Yeah, it makes it look, look uh, much more realistic, yeah, the, exactly. the water. And these five new weather settings are going to be added in the 110 as well. Yes. Um, and they are. Again, they, like the map, is on the prototype, if you want to have a look at them. Um, kind of the, depends on how lucky you are, which one you're going to see, but they might be there. Yes. Let's, uh, let's do a giveaway before we're continuing on, but let's keep the game running. Yes. The giveaway today, because we're going to talk about helmet covers in a little bit, is of course well not a helmet because we kind of need the helmet we have in photos <laughs> but we have a cap can i have you hand me the cap this one? yeah and actually that's the cap we're gonna send to one of you this is the one yeah sorry and yeah. this time <laughs> if you want to take part in the uh the giveaway let's start it up um, yes you should be able to say start giveaway should I open it yeah do that you need to write exclamation mark Kalmar, C-O-L-M-A-R. And if you do that, you will get uh, a ticket in this uh, giveaway. For this pretty hat. Oh. Well, mine is actually grey, but this one is black and I <coughs> like both of them. Okay. They're the coming is one in. size, so should fit every one of you. the game? I won it. Oh, you won it. <laughs> you have some good bots in your team then. It was those three guys I killed. <laughs> Turned the whole game. So... so did, we, uh, did we get everybody to write exclamation mark comma or do you need just 30 seconds yet? 
Should we close it? Yeah, let's close it. Let's close it. If you went on there now, you're not going to get one. So All let's right. close it and pick a winner. Last chance. Close. And pick, pick a winner. winner. X Tiger Shark 7 is the winner. Yeah, please say something in the chat. Uh, Reto Splexen will uh, it's already there. take care of you. Cool. <laughs> it's already there. There's a, well, not a cap, there's this cap on. It's a way to you. <laughs> it <be> magic, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, well, I'm going to put it here so you can see it. There we are. Speaking of caps, we're going to have a look at the new helmet colors coming in 110. We're yeah. going to go to my computer, I'll yes. show them, and you'll load one of them up in the game. Yeah, I'll try to get one. Uh, yeah. There we have them. I put them all into one document so you could see more. Um, these are the German ones. There's, there's, there's 13 of the German ones. What we did is we made helmet covers to match each and every infantry uniform. So you now go into war actually having a, an outfit that, that match. Um, you can't guarantee that you'll win if you have an outfit that match, but, but at least you'll look good, whether or not you lose. Lose or win. Um, we have, as I said, we have 13 German ones. Um, we have, I'm gonna go to the next one, is, of course it's teasing me, the Russian or the Soviet Union have 12 helmets, and let's see if we can get to the last one that one sorry yeah i was right the first time these are of course uh, the uh, united states helmets and there's 17 of those again one for each um, uniform and well my math math skills might be failing me but doing a bit of math adding in the helmet paints that we put in the game in the 109 update uh, that should make for Roughly about, I think it's about 770 different so soldier, infantry soldier combinations in the game. That's uh, 192 for the Soviet faction, 357 for the United States, and 221 combinations for the German faction. Uh, all of the uh, helmet covers are, of course, designed by uh, Rito Mato and I've seen a lot of his research, he's done extensive research of, on all of them. Uh, some of these, as the history buffs among you know, they were in combat, and some of these are experimental uh, camouflages that were, were tested but might not have been used that extensively in the field. But if you think, every one of them is based on historical data. And you have one of them? Yeah, I have one of them. Uh, then let's have a look at it. successful. In the game. I just okay. need to switch over. Mm -hmm. So there it is. There it is, yeah. Matching and all. Yeah. It's nice. It's got that cloth look. Yeah, it does. You got the seams. Some really nice detail in there. We like that a lot. Yeah. And to, to everybody who's thinking, is that it? No, it's not. I know Ray Tomato is, is working on even more helmet stuff uh, that's going to be in a future update. Can't say when, because basically I really don't know. You can look stylish when you're on your bike. It does. <laughs> but again, you always look stylish on a bike. Mm. And you can be extremely well camouflaged yeah. in the woods. <laughs> Again, they're going to be in the 110. They are on the prototype if you want to have a look at them. Yeah. Uh, and another thing that's on the prototype are new vehicle paints. Again, we're going to go back to my computer to have a look at those. No. Got 
Can I leave this map now? Yeah, you can leave the map <laughs> if you want to. Fantastic. We have 14 new vehicle paint jobs uh, going into the 110. Um, and they are distributed among trucks, half tracks, heavy tanks. And there's a single um, amphibian vehicle in there as well. Um, just going through them fast. This is the uh, German truck, the Russian, or the Soviet truck. And that should be the American truck. We have the amphibian, the uh, QNC quarter ton amphibian. I really like that one. That's kind of one of my favorite vehicles in the game, simply because it's fun. And we have some half tracks. This is the German, the uh, SDK KFZ. I can't speak German, which has two variants uh, the Soviet one, the Land Lease one. Um, the M3A1, again with two patterns, and finally we have uh, the US one, uh, gets a single pattern, the Soviet Recon vehicle, the, the BA6, and of course we have a few heavy tank paint jobs, this one is the uh, KEV85, and the Pershing gets two as well. Some of you might be thinking, well, why is my favorite vehicle not in there? And basically the answer is the same as with the helmet covers. We are working on more vehicle paint jobs. They are going to be in future updates, in several future updates, I guess, because there's a lot of paint jobs that we are working on that are in different states of production. And when they're done, yeah, we'll get them in the game for you to play around with. And I think that's that's about it for the 110. There's, yeah. uh, of course, other small stuff coming in the 110 and stuff like that. That's going to be in the change log and in the release blog post. Uh, so you can see all the details of, of what we did to the game this time. And again, if you can't wait, go to the prototype server. The 110 is on there for you to try out. Uh, and just to recap, what we talked about today was, uh, yeah, well, we had a bit of news to start off with. We had a look around the new map Yeah, that you did. It's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. We are very happy. We had a look at the new weather settings. That looks equally nice. Yeah. New helmet covers coming in, in the one cent. I forgot to mention, we actually, had, in total, that's 42 helmet covers going in. So that, that's <laughs> quite a lot of helmet covers. And more and, are coming. So. And more are coming even, so that's pretty cool. And again, 14 vehicle paint jobs, we had a look at them. If you missed the start of this episode, it's going to be available on YouTube for you to watch. Um, next Wednesday, we will have a new Twitch stream. That's going to be Retro Red Bjarne and uh, Retro Gargamel. They're back with the QA and Y show. <laughs> have a look at the uh, web page uh, for your opportunity to ask any question about the ocean generals that you want to ask. Um, when we've collected all the questions, there's going to be a vote on uh, what questions uh, should be answered first. So take part in that as well. That's your best opportunity to, to get the, uh, the information that, that you think you need. Um, of course, we would encourage you to follow us on Twitch. There should be a follow us button just about there. <laughs> um, and you can, as always, find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, as I mentioned, and on heroesandgenerals.com. So uh, stop by, have a look, see what we're doing with the game. For now, we are very happy that you took part in this update preview. See you in the game, and take care. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>